Hi everybody. Welcome back. This is Kevin at Bear Creek Honey and uh, you're watching my adventures in beekeeping. Um, not a lot of activity uh, going on this month. Uh, just waiting uh, for my uh, honey to ripen uh, and so I can start taking it off and, and putting it on. So there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of things to do as far as maintenance goes on with my bees. Um, but uh, I do have two things I want to do today. One is give you an update on my combination hives. If you remember right, these were hives that uh, had um, laying workers. And I set them on top of uh, a working nucleus colony uh, with a, with a queen right, a queen right a nucleus colony uh, and I combine them together and we're just gonna check them out and uh, just see how they're progressing whoa I got bumped by a bee um, the second one is a phenomenon that uh, one of my hives whoa he's pissed all right all right all right you ever have that one bee that just won't leave you alone but uh, anyways uh, I have one hive that has a phenomenon going on that beekeepers have been trying to uh, determine the mystery of for probably centuries and they have not discovered as the reason why the bees do this and I just wanted to show it to you this hive has been doing it it started off uh, just bearding because it was re relatively hot out but even on the colder days lately in the last week the bees have been uh, progressively doing this more and more and I just wanted to kind of uh, show you exactly what they're doing, and to um, and to and just to take a look at some of uh, the things uh, up close that they are doing while they're doing this in, is essentially in unison. So let's take a quick look, and I'm gonna pop this off here real quick. So okay, this is uh, this is my uh, probably my biggest hive, or I shouldn't say my biggest hive. Uh, my most populated hive. This is a obviously it's a 10 frame brood box with uh, four honey supers, three mediums, and one one deep. Uh, the upper deep used to be uh, a second brood box uh, that I uh, shook down and uh, and then converted into a honey super. And um, we on this was on June 25th. We are at. I can't even remember what day it is today, June 12th or 13th, 14th, somewhere around there. I, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, we have a few more days before 21 days have uh, e uh, elapsed uh, where all the brood in that box will have hatched and they will have backfilled everything with, uh, with nectar and honey. So, but anyways, this is what I wanted to show you. This is what they've been doing for the last for the last few days. This is called washboarding. And you can see the bees doing this. Um, not all the bees are doing it, but a lot of them. Now some of the things to, to, to look at. Number one is they are all, all the bees that are washboarding are facing downward. Okay, they're not facing up doing this generally. Um, so they're facing downward and their back four legs, this is the second thing, their back four legs are actually doing the work, moving them backwards and forwards. Their front legs are flailing. Unbelievably flailing. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but they are flailing while they're going back and forth. Now I can't really see exactly, um, you know, what their mouth is doing at the time. But uh, nonetheless, this is what they are doing. Now they are doing this in specific locations. And this is only on the front of the box. Okay. You can see the sides. They are not doing it up on the honey supers that I have. But they are doing it somewhat, a little bit, and they, at an upper entrance that I have in this brood box. Um, and they were doing it more yesterday than today. But in, in but. Uh, but here's the deal, they're doing it more in the areas where this is the main entrance. So they're doing it more in front of here. This is a secondary entrance up on top, more of a vent hole, but they're also doing it there as well. 
and then this is a third entrance so they're doing it even less because they use it less this is only an observation I don't know you know how much uh, you know there's not much science in, in my observation obviously but um, researchers don't have a clue as to why they do it but they have come to the conclusion that the bees from 15 to 25 days old are the ones that are doing this now you can tell I got some of the bees are still coming in and they've got uh, they've got pollen um, and they'll go into the hive and, and do their thing and other bees it hasn't stopped the traffic uh, of the foragers uh, doing this now one of my theories is that quite possibly there are more nurse bees in this hive than can take care of the brood and so there's really nothing for them to do so this is what they are doing um, that's a possibility because they're not quite old enough to become foragers yet uh, I do not know I have no scientific basis for that um, it's only like I said just a just a theory and based on very very limited observation of these bees doing this uh, this uh, they almost line up in rows doing this and it's very very fun to watch um, you know bees fascinate me as to why they do the things they do but this is one of the mysteries where none of the master beekeepers and the scientists have ever uh, figured out what exactly they are doing it for what reason is is perpetuating this and as the day gets warmer they will be out here and they will be out here uh, they weren't out here this morning they were kind of congregated in this area very early this morning right at daybreak but this will be like this all day long and all up it was even past dark yesterday that they were still doing this now as it got colder I think they retreated back into the hive as it cooled down uh, we had some rainstorms last night but uh, but still so I just thought I'd, uh, I'd share that with you um, and uh, and not all my hives are doing this. I have another, I have a double nucleus hive that's more packed out than this one. And, uh, and it's not doing it at all. And uh, I also have one next door here. Uh, this is, you know, uh, obviously not as packed out. And they're just going about business as normal. And it's got two supers on it. And they're just kind of, kind of doing their thing. We had a, uh, now we had a slowdown. We had a drought here. We had a slowdown of the, uh, of the honey flow uh, as the drought progressed we had three weeks but it rained in the last couple of days and so the bees are starting to get back more active I think the flowers are kind of rejuvenating getting a little bit more nectar in so they're starting to bring in more more nectar which is good because I was getting kind of concerned uh, but uh, anyways well, let's uh, let's go in and we'll take a look at this little hive and uh, and we'll see I'll show you uh, hopefully the progression of this uh, of this nuke, and uh, and we'll see uh, if it is uh, indeed progressing. Like I said, this was a combined a combined nuke. Uh, if you remember that episode, we combined it uh, with uh, laying workers uh, with a, a laying worker nuke. So. I'm not feeding this hive simply because it uh, there's just enough nectar and everything out there where they don't really need this I don't think now I didn't bring my smoke today and if this gets a little testy on me I might have to go and get some smoke but for now um, we're not but one of the things I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch out my glasses I forgot that got my three powers here let me switch them out real quick
Okie dokie, let's get into this now. I just can spot eggs a lot better than I can with these three power than I can with my normal reading glasses. Nectar, they're building it out at least. Honey, nectar, this is what I'd expect. Nothing on that side, nothing really on this side. Okay. Yep. Here's the uh, here's the um, drone larvae that they've eaten out. You can kind of see that and to torn apart. They really ripped this to shreds. I don't see any. Oh yeah, I do. There's eggs. There's eggs and cells here. So that's a good sign. I just wanted to get back here where the sun. There's at least eggs in some of the cells anyways. Not all of them, but some of them. Good. Again, this is the uh, the drone comb. They've really torn the, torn the hell out of this. No eggs on this frame. This side that I can see. Okay. Interesting. I was in my other hive over there uh, that I also combined that one and uh, and the, the, I found the queen um, running around the actual uh, eating out drone comb um, drone frame so okay this one's got lots and lots of larvae in it some young bees Lots and lots of larvae. Well, well, well laid out. So that's a good sign. This one also. Every cell that doesn't have honey, honey in it, or nectar, has uh, has larvae in it. Excellent. And it looks like where there are eggs, there's only a single egg, so that says that uh, it's a queen and not a worker, for the most part. Okay, this one's also loaded up. There she is. There's my queen. Right there. You can see her. So she's on the frame. Okay. I'd call this a success. A successful combination of these hives. Interesting part, she's on the outside frame, but uh, nonetheless. I'm gonna put these back together. And buckle this baby up bad up. So there we go. We've got a successful combination of a laying worker nuke 
with a queen right nuke. So I'd say that that's a pretty good way of um, helping your colonies if that you find that maybe have a, a laying worker. Um, you don't have to shake them out. That's kind of an outdated, um, sort of an outdated beekeeping um, method. Um, combining them with newspaper, queen excluder, let them get used to it. Seems to, uh, seems to work just fine. And now I've got a healthy, thriving colony uh, that I can uh, take right into winter. Um, unless, uh, and if I have a, a failing uh, 10 frame going into winter, well, I'll just take this one and, uh, and combine it with, uh, with that hive. So I'll have a, a big healthy hive. We don't want to have any medium hives going into winter. Um, we want to have nice, strong, healthy hives going into winter. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the washboarding. Uh, watching those bees do their thing. That was, uh, that is kind of fun. Uh, as you can see, like I said, I got, you know, probably 30, 60, 90, and then another, and then 70 in here in this deep. Um, so I probably got 160 pounds of honey going here. Um, if they fill it all out, this one's, you know, this one's almost all the way full. Uh, this one's pretty full, uh, probably 60% full. And this one's, well, when I put it on, it was empty uh, about a week ago. Um, so hopefully they've started to, to draw it out, but in another three weeks and uh, I'm out of supers. That's it. I have 16 supers in use right now. They're all being used. Yes, I could spin out some and, and put them back. Um, but I probably am not going to do that. Um, we'll have, just have to see how it goes. So until next time, happy beekeeping people.